Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. Today is the 9th of October, 2024. Topics I've got on the list. I put at the very top of the list, Sam, what's the future of the Jenkins UI, assuming that we, we would take it first and give you some time. Then I've got Jenkins releases, a review of recent UI topics, active work, what's upcoming in the next baseline, so that people are reminded. If Jan is here, we can ask him for a survey of the a results from the survey of the Jenkins dashboard. And then I've got a summary of a report that Christina Pizzigale, you reviewed on usability, accessibility. Any other topics that we need to be sure are on the, on the agenda for today? All right. Okay, so Sam, um, you want to give us some more on what what this topic was, and we'll go ahead. Sure. So, hi, everyone. I am Sam Gleski. Well, I am a Jenkins admin and contributor for several years. So it's good to see everyone. Uh, so where this topic came about, at least from my context and perspective, is there's a lot of different Jenkins UIs. Of course, there's the classic one, like console logs and stuff like that. There's Blue Ocean. Blue Ocean has a really great interface. However, it doesn't always surface all of the relevant information. Sometimes I switch back to the classic logs to see some exceptions and errors. Um, also, it's kind of limited in how it organizes the graphs, which uh, really actually heavily dictates the engineering and design of pipelines rather than implementing features how I envision them. I tend to implement features in a way that look nice rather than in favoring functionality or organizing logic in a way that would make sense to me or for a user. Uh, and, that, and that requires a lot of forethought and engineering involved to plan around the UI. And it takes a lot of experience with that UI to know its limitations and parallel pipelines and sequential pipelines in the mix of the two. Uh, there's a third UI, uh, which came out after Blue Ocean's uh, kind of its spiritual successor. You have, I believe it's the Pipeline Graph View plugin. Uh, and uh, when we rolled that out uh, at the beginning of 2024, maybe it was even, I'm sorry, the beginning of 2023, I don't know. When we rolled it out is the short version. We set it as the default UI because I was excited to see it. it, had a dark view mode. It's really nice looking. And we ended up rolling back to the blue ocean as the default for users because uh, we make heavy use of input dialogues for various purposes, for deployment approvals or uh, or authorization, for example, someone initiates a pull request, but that contributor is not a direct writer on that. So we reach into GitHub's backend API to detect who should have what permissions. And then on the fly, surface a dialogue restricting it only to the owners of that repository to approve those elevated credential issuance and exercising those more extended tests as long as they review that contributor's code. Um, and these are just sort of custom things that we wrote in the back end. But uh, the reason why I give you that context is the pipeline graph view plugin does not handle input dialogues very well. Uh, it, they're actually nearly completely hidden. And uh, so what we end up doing is recommending people go back to Blue Ocean, which eventually is why we switched it back to the default because it was just kind of clunky. And that kind of comes down to uh, the fourth UI that we tend to use, which is the pipeline steps view. Uh, really, that to me, that's sort of the end all of the log troubleshooting. It, it surfaces the best uh, logs, which is kind of a compromise between all the UIs involved. It just shows you a breakdown of the hierarchy of the graph of the of the graph, and then a console link next to each one as its status per step with all the benchmarks and timings and stuff like that. It's a really nice view if you're getting down in the details. That being said, I know I explained a lot of different UIs. Um, I think there's so many options and the complexity of troubleshooting it, it, it in the future, like say five years down the road, 
Jenkins is going to have a hard time competing with uh, like newcomers who have thought through their UIs. Uh, they certainly, you know, aren't as feature rich, which is why we still use Jenkins, of course. Uh, but the UI is a big experience into how nice it is for a developer to use a system. And for Jenkins in particular, there's so many different ways to troubleshoot. You almost need an expert troubleshooter to help you troubleshoot. Uh, and, and so I was curious, are there any plans to really mature the uh, pipeline graph view plugin? Is it kind of in hiatus or are there other like major UI uh, plans regarding trying to wrangle all of the above into a more coherent experience five years, 10 years down the line, what have you, and possibly contributions opportunities from my company side to help make that a reality. Cool. Thanks. Good question. So uh, I'll try to answer and others can chime in if they, if they disagree with my answer. So Pipeline GraphView um, has had significant improvements based on feedback from the Jenkins Contributor Summit at the start of 2024. So what we had was we had Tim Jacome present in the room while Damien Duportal could share, hey, as an infra person, I'm having these challenges. And that resulted in very, very valuable improvements to Pipeline GraphView in that, in that period. Those those things continue and it is still actively maintained. Uh, I suspect it's got poor support for input dialogues because the maintainers don't typically use them, but I suspect they would be interested in and willing to receive proposals, discussions, even a video showing, hey, here's how the input dialogue looks. Could it be made better? And, and at least they were quite responsive to Damien's feedback. Damien said, hey, look, as, a, as an infra person, I need to do this and this. And, and Tim, during the session, actually made one or two fixes already and then later made several more. So I think, I think the story is actually pretty good here, Sam, in terms of the first question of what I call pipeline visualization or pipeline steps review, right? It's 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 got a at least for me i've switched to it and i'm using it exclusively now i've stopped using blue ocean entirely and and my experience has been very very positive particularly with the most recent releases however i am definitely not a user of an input dialogue so i can't even tell you if if the behavior is any better now or worse now sure and i'd be happy to do demos in the future of how we use it or if Tim would like to have a dedicated meeting. I'm willing to do it either here or in a dedicated meeting. Well, if if you're willing to demonstrate now, I would love to see a demonstration now. If if, but I assume you don't have Pipeline Graph you installed anymore, do you? Oh no, we keep everything installed. Okay, uh, well, so if so you're the willing moment, to, if you're willing and, and to disclaimer, it's the plugin is six months out of date, which, so which is we're going to do fun. another maintenance in January to update everything. But just let you know, some of my information may even be dated due to the age of our plugins. Well, and, and that's easy for others of us to check. If you can show us a demonstration, if you're willing to share your screen and show us a demonstration now, I think everybody else would benefit. And then Tim and Jan and others can go look at it, watch the, the demo later and see, oh, hey, here's what they did. They can try it with current code. Is it still behaving like that? And then look to see what, what they could improve. Are you willing to share sure. your screen? Yeah. Let me just real quick select a project. Let me see what I have. Um, might need to go into my staging environment. I mean, I could also assemble a job with with an input step, if that will help, Tim, or, uh, Sam, uh, my, whichever, it's, it's, it's just, if you've already got one available, I we have, can have you. I definitely have one prepared. I'm just want to make sure that it's sanitized. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. Don't want to no. share something you shouldn't. Thank you. So uh, I'm actually running it right now in the background and I'll bring it up. Uh, if you like, you can uh, divert to other topics and I'll just raise my hand when I'm ready. Great, even better. Let's do that. So I'll, I'll switch back to sharing my screen and we'll take the other topics. You raise your hand when you're ready to go to the next.
that's that's super thanks all right, so next topic that I had was actually more informational on Jenkins releases. Uh, we just released 2.480 and 2.462.3 was released the week prior. Reminder, that is the last LTS to support Java 11. Java 11 is now dead to the Jenkins project, right? We are next release, 30th of October will not support Java 11. We're scheduled to do that release the 30th of October, and we're working through the release checklist now. Uh, there will be some additional backports uh, because we've got more backports are coming, uh, but already first round of backports are done. Any questions from others on the Jenkins releases and the plan there? Um, is there a plan to have some a blog post that we are now uh, requiring another Java version? Good, good point. Yes. So blog post announcing the requirement, the new Java requirement. Yes. And, and we, we'll have and, the change log and the upgrade guide and upgrade guide that announce it as well. And the previous, previous change log so the 2.462.3 change log has a banner that says this is the last release, last Java 11 release. Good, good question, Uli. Now, did, did that answer your question or was there other? Yes, almost. And I, I have one additional thing. It would be good if the blog post also would say if they can do it, they should not migrate to Java 17. They should make, migrate to Java 21 because Good. next year at the same time, we are already make, migrating to Java 21. And if someone wants to, yeah, to be quicker in the adoption, it would be helpful if they already switch to Java 21. Good. Some can't, but if they can, it would be really well, and, and it's been, I think you've got a good point. It's been, Java 21 has been supported, fully functioning and working great for a year plus. So, so stepping to Java 17 is certainly good. Stepping to Java 21 is, is at least as good. Yeah. Good. Very good. Thanks. Anything else on Jenkins releases? Okay, so next next one was on active work, and and here I'd been looking through the. Oh, Sam, are you ready? Yeah, I was just letting you finish the releases topic. Okay, great. So releases out. topic is done. I'll stop sharing and let's switch to to Sam. You've got the you've got the controls. Sure. So uh, from uh, so we use GitHub for context, uh, and. Uh, so the first thing that comes up, this really isn't Jenkins related, but the GitHub statuses can actually reflect different things uh, in terms of, you know, different colors and states, and you can update information here. So the input, I realize we're probably a little bit on the more niche side of user base in terms of how extensively you use input, but from the pull request perspective, nothing really shows up. It just looks like it's building. It's all in progress. There's no pause, but there is a pause. It's not obvious to the user. They would have to come back to it and realize their job's still running an hour later if they were doing other stuff. Uh, and then uh, when they go to visit it, it would, um, bah -bah. let me see here. Let me go into, so here's the classic view. Uh, and then the graph view is in the pipeline overview and pipeline console. So this was a former default. They would come here and it, this is how it looks when there's an input and it, there's nothing really indicating at a high level if someone's not really paying attention, digging into details yet to indicate uh, by uh, converse here is blue oceans view. It has a great big pause button. It's front and center. It's obvious that we've paused for input. You need to select something. Uh, so there's one enhancement that could happen is just the icon alone. When you drill into it, um, 
This is more akin to the classic view. So what I mean by that is if you go to the classic console log, which is the least user friendly, but sometimes has exceptions that no other UI would have, uh, you have this input requested here that you can click on and it surfaces you this classic UI dialogue. Uh, what I like about Blue Ocean is it's front and center and integrated right here. You're not having to click an alternate post link to visit it or anything like that. Uh, if I come back to the pipeline console, uh, now, again, we're actually in the pipeline console view. So this this is, we recall, we started in the pipeline graph view. So these are two sections of the of views for the same plugin. So here, when you drop this box down, you have a similar um, dialogue as the classic console log that you can click and you're redirected to the classic input dialogue. Uh, and for better or worse, I realize that, you know, browsing UIs isn't always rocket science, but sometimes, you know, not everyone has the same attention levels. Not everyone has the same attention to detail. So these little things I found at scale interacting with thousands of people over time that these little elements like in Blue Ocean are, are difficult to move away from because of how helpful they are. That being said, again, Blue Ocean has its own quirks with how it displays graphs and things like that. And to just sort of just tie everything together, because I mentioned several UIs in my introduction, uh, if I go back to the build, uh, the the uh, fourth UI I was referring to, the pipeline steps view is this one down at the bottom that I mentioned, really just does a great job at breaking down all of the steps. And off to the right, there's timings and uh, console logs per step that you can view. So that's... Uh, that's not really related to the UI UX feedback in terms of uh, in in terms of the pipeline graph view plugin, but I'm just sort of rehashing all of the different views that I explained at the very beginning. So uh, that's pretty much the end of my demo in terms of how input dialogues. Uh, okay, so could you take us back to the blue? Oh, you. Oh, I think that's. I'll reshare. Go ahead. Uh, so the on the on the blue ocean dialogue, the thing that is most attractive to your users is the fact that it's okay, very visible that it's paused, right? It's, so an icon change, and then uh, there's a color change too. Like I like the the entire UI actually changed to match the color as well. So it just visually everything was kind of drastically a different color to let you know something is up. And then uh, your eyes kind of gravitate to what is in progress just naturally, I feel. And, and there's a pause button, which I feel is kind of universally recognizable. And then you scroll down and you see front and center, I don't need to click a, a link to go to an alternate page. It actually rendered in page the dialogue. Right. Okay. So, and and that, that again, seems like a, a real positive here that hey, the, the prompt to the user, I had missed the fact that there was a color change. So the hint up at the top, normally the, the top bar would be a different color because yeah. it's paused, it's okay. changed, it's given a visual cue that there is a pause here. Yes. Okay. And for whatever reason, they selected this light hue of blue. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm the wrong person to talk about colors. I'm, I'm mostly color deficient and therefore, but... But other people, yeah. when they look it at this, can they say, from all the other states in Jenkins. Right, exactly. That's it, there is a clear distinction there in terms of what the user is seeing. They're seeing something that's very different than what they would have seen if they'd viewed this same thing during the testing phase or during the prepare Jenkins file. Correct. Great. All right, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. any any questions from others to clarify or any other other points you wanted to highlight, Sam. Uh, I would say probably the final point, which is kind of just rehashing what I originally said, it would be nice to have a little bit more unified of an experience so that it's because right now I mentioned there's like five or six different UIs. So if maybe if all the UIs can relate to each other in some way, kind of like the pipeline graph view relating to the pipeline console, um, I've realized that's one plugin relating to itself. 
but it would be nice if the plugins gave you hints for different areas on where to look next. Uh, because when an error occurs, it could be a plugin exception. Uh, another example of like roughness in this area is if you, uh, if you're using the PR merge status rather than the PR head, uh, the build will not start from the GitHub perspective. It, it, the required check will just show up as expected, but nothing happened. From the user perspective, it's like a it's it looks the same as a dropped webhook because we've had a lot of issues with that. Uh, so because nothing happened, so it's like, is it Jenkins? Is it GitHub? We don't know. But if you go to Jenkins itself. Uh, how you discover that quirk is actually you go not here, which is where like the pull request is, but you actually have to go a level up into the scan log and either the scan log or the multi pipeline events. It will uh, show actually, I believe it's the multi branch pipeline events. Scan log is when you actively click this button and scan. Multi pipeline events is sort of things coming in as they deem fit via webhook and stuff like that. And it would be deep very deep inside of this log where it says, hey, we tried to do the PR merge uh, and I can do a configuration, show you the configuration if that's not clear enough, but we tried to do a PR merge and there's a conflict, so no build will occur. So it actually just skips running the PR build at all. And this is just another example where it's like, you kind of have to be a real expert at navigating to figure out why that build didn't trigger. And it kind of takes someone extremely familiar like myself to go in and dig through, am I looking at the event logs in GitHub in the back end with the integration where webhooks are configured? Okay, everything looks fine. Uh, do I go into my debug logs because I've set up custom debug, debug loggers in the Jenkins logs for webhook ingest? And everything was fine there. Jenkins processed it. And then I had, then eventually I found my way into this dialogue and it's like, oh, okay. It's, it's just, there was a merge conflict and GitHub very plainly displays that there's a merge conflict in their UI as well, but it just wasn't obvious that the merge conflict prevented the initiation of the build. And because there was no build initiated, there was no GitHub statuses associated with it. So, so could you scroll up on this page? I've got some questions to ask for sort of for my own, my own thinking process. I've had... I've had cases where I wished the contents of scan repository log would somehow pop up for me and say, there was something unexpected in this. Um, mm -hmm. And multi-branch pipeline events sounds like it may be the same kind of thing where, where you would conceptually like to know, was there some surprise in this thing that didn't get surfaced in any other way? Now, now how do we, how do we, parse for surprises i'm not sure i know a way to do that but well, the idea i think one way i could think of doing that you don't necessarily need to parse the events uh it's the part that is the event listener that is doing the checking of the merge status mm -hmm. it knows the pull request already it knows that what pull request it needs to check for the merge status. So it can submit, for example, a context of some kind back to the pull request with a failure to say not mergeable as a context with a link back to this log, which is actually outside of the pull request as a high level example. It's still not great, but it's would be very plain and clear what happened. Uh, I only mention it wouldn't be great is because it, it, this is a higher level log, right? It's at the job level. It's not in the pull request level. So if you, so if someone's not in GitHub and they're purely browsing through Jenkins and they go to the pull request itself, it might not even be obvious. Maybe the answer to that is to initiate a fake failed build so that it would be obvious in both places because a fake failed build would submit any contexts that it needs to submit and it would also um show up in the jenkins ui you wouldn't have to go through this like uh traversal of logs to find this area which took a while the first time as a yeah, okay okay so I'm, i i think there were two things you described there so the first was you think there may be a way to notify back to GitHub so that it becomes visible to the user in GitHub, more visible to the U GitHub user, something happened that caused this to not proceed. And, yes. and so like, if you look at this log here, mm -hmm. this event is actually the GitHub webhook plugin parsing, right? Right. So 
it know it's the, actually the GitHub webhook plugin and not the multi-branch plugin that is checking for these events. I did a lot of traces, so that's why I know so much. But like, uh, so when a webhook comes in, it comes into the GitHub webhook plugin. The GitHub webhook plugin has the context of the pull request number, the GitHub repository, and then it does a global search within Jenkins for all kinds of pipelines, not not just multi-branch, but it'll look for GitHub orgs and other kinds of pipelines. And anything that matches, it triggers a build on that pipeline. Now, it, what actually happens under the hood here is when it reaches this part of the log in that parse process, it says, oh, by the way, it's not mergeable, which means a build can't possibly be triggered because it's not mergeable. So it skips sending the event downstream to the multi-branch pipeline job that would have processed it mm -hmm. at that time. So uh, I don't know if there's a, it might require a new kind of event, like failed build, like trigger with failure event where the build is initiated on the pull request job and kind of like a build that shows up with a user abort or a build that uh, I'm trying to think of other t builds that I've seen that are kind of relatable in terms of uh, I am struggling with my UI at the moment. Apologize. I don't know what I just did. Oh, and and yeah. So, but so the, the concept there is that get the if if the if the thing that processed the webhook had a way to inform github hey i will do nothing and then a way to make it that fact visible to the jenkins user both would benefit is i think that's what you're saying it is it was actually kind of i have had a streaming consciousness of thought it started as github webhook go notify mm -hmm. but then it turned into well the multi branch pipeline is already configured to notify so just utilize that and that's where I eventually more I morphed it on the fly. It wasn't a forethought, uh, where you just start a failed build event, and like if I were to trigger a build on that pull request right now and then abort the build, it would show up as a failed build in the GitHub UI with the PR merge status or the PR head status. So something like that. Schedule a future with a known fail case. I don't, not sure if I recall that being possible in Jenkins where you can schedule a future failure. It Jenkins tends to only schedule futures and then acts on them and then eventually hits a failure. So I'm, I'm not sure like what the correct chain of events are under the hood and the Java API should be, but, um, but it might makes more, what I, I guess what I'm summarizing as it might make more sense for the GitHub webhook integration to still pass the event on because it's the GitHub webhook is actually choosing not to notify jobs that a build needs to be initiated. And, ah. and so the event stops there and that's why the dialogue doesn't continue on into Jenkins or GitHub. And you have to come the three levels up here to see the pipeline events log, which is where the GitHub webhooks plugin is logging its events uh so it might even just still make sense to still trigger it even though it will definitely fail like it will well, fail but, um, okay one of my worries is, is it might not fail right the fact that it's not mergeable i can still clone that thing and the thing that i clone will not have included the merge because github didn't do the merge so wouldn't i get a false positive there where a false false sense of security that oh it passed but it had not merged at all. So, so it so that seems like might there's be a, new a difference concept. in understanding. So, what you're saying is Jenkins actually waits for GitHub to do the merge on the back end and then clones the uh, the refs merge. I think so, but now I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I just I I thought okay. that that was a GitHub operation, not a Jenkins operation, performing that merge. Okay, it might be. I I have not dug that deep into those APIs. So, I mean, either way, I've the intent is there to somehow signal the failure downstream. Right. Maybe it's not possible with the current Jenkins APIs and how it interacts with GitHub. 
Uh, maybe there needs to be a feature where you can schedule planned failed builds so that status can be exposed. Um, I'm not sure what the right path would be, but that's just an example, a mm. UX example where like things were extremely hidden and it, uh, and really it took a deep understanding of the internals of Jenkins to arrive at the UI part to which, you know, someone who might not be as familiar with the Java development side of Jenkins, I don't know if they would have arrived at that. Thanks. Good. Uh, so yeah, I guess those are the last, the, that's all I had to say. I've, hopefully I didn't take up too much of everyone's time, but. Thanks, Sam, very much. Thank you, thank you. So sh let's go ahead and continue. We'll rely on the Pipeline GraphView developers to take a look at the recording. If they've got questions, Sam, I'm assuming they can just ask you questions and talk, on, discuss it in various places. Yep, I'm on Gitter. You can at mention Sam Rocketman on GitHub. Uh, and yeah, if, if you want other points of contact, uh, you know, hit me up on Gitter. Great. I Thank also you. think it would be helpful if uh, we could have some uh, issues for this topic, because I think nobody else is actually using this uh, view as input. Everybody is using it as an output screen. So there is no plan for adding input dialogues, etc. So good idea. Nobody I'll knows about it. Jenkins bug against the against the graph view plugin and for the work that I discussed on the multi-branch pipeline event tracing do you want me to file a bug against github webhook plugin multi-branch uh the github it's actually the github branch source plugin but it, is there any components you want me to add to that bug report I don't choose know. choose github branch source as a good first choice for my mind and if you link to the others that's great as well i think the the pipeline graph view bug report once you've submitted that if you send me the 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 link to it i can embed a link to this video in the recording of this meeting so that they can even go look at the meeting recording and see oh here's sam demonstrating what the what he saw sounds good thank you Appreciate it, Mark. Great. All right. And I think uh, the other thing we can say is that the blue ocean and nobody is supporting anymore. So I, we have no developers. So this is a kind of dead end. 100%. So everything should go into the other UI elements. I completely agree. That's why I'm like surfacing it. We're using Blow Ocean, but we have no choice. <laughs> right. Well, and, and and thanks for doing it because you're doing exactly what Damien did back at the Contributor Summit of saying, hey, I've got a challenge. Here's this challenge. And then the, the maintainers can look and say, hey, well, we could use help or, hey, we might be able to do this. Let's give them a chance to at least realize, oh, here's this use case that hadn't been considered and and here's a, a large scale user who's interested in it. Great. All right. Anything else on the on on Sam's topic? Okay, so then let's take on on the others here. Here, this is what we typically do in this section of the meetings. We talk about what's actively being worked. When I looked at these, most of them need need additional input, additional additional comment. Um, and I think the answer is that work just needs to continue. So this, maybe we should put one here as a top level, uh, which is remove Yahoo UI, right? So Marcus, Marcus Winter of SAP has been working on this and uh, Yahoo UI is this long dead JavaScript component that we continue to use and Marcus has been making steady progress, getting rid of it in various places. This one is one of those examples and it progress continues. Now we're probably several months away from getting rid of it entirely, uh, but it's, it is really making progress. In terms of the others on the list here, the command palette for search, this just, it needs review and discussion. If when we look at the UI, I like the way the UI looks very much. It changes search to, to, to modern, right? To something, it's not just a little dialogue in the top left-hand corner. It really takes, 
takes you into the, the experience much deeper. So nice, nice work there, but it needs more review, more discussion, et cetera. Um, we've got some smaller ones. This one, if I remember right, is actually an improvement that will remove some Yahoo UI. So, so again, good, good progress there. And now the last one, okay, Sam, this is, this is me, me being noisy about one. I had, I have for the longest time wanted uh, to have the title of the pull request shown in the UI, pretty please. And Tim told me, oh, Mark, there's a trait, there's a, there's a trait you can add that will do this automatically, but it should be the default. And so I've got to find that trait because this is exactly what I want and this is what I have today. So, but he's suggesting we should really make this the default. Notice it's still draft, so it's, it's got work to be done, but we should really make it the default to show this and require people to, to only show the PR branch name by, by a, uh, their choice to revert back to old behavior. So all nice work happening. Any questions on the active work? I have to defer probably to the people working on it. I'm just the gatherer of information. La next though, is the upcoming in the next LTS. And here, this one is good for people to be aware of. Build history widget has been reworked. So to Sam and to Riley, this is a good thing for you to test in the pre-release. Be sure that it doesn't surface problems for you. Um, user property categorization, probably not as big an impact. Idle executors are no longer shown on the node status page. So your node status is much simplified and several other improvements like that. So just this is a good chance to do a check to be sure that your UI and your environment works well with 2.479 weekly and the LTS that will be based on it. Sounds good. In January is when we're going to do major upgrades. Okay. Uh, so that'll probably be the earliest I'll be able to. Yeah. So you'll it's see. It's going to come out before then. Uh, but. I do want to roll Jenkins out on Graviton. I noticed you're requiring Java 17 has better Graviton support. So, yep. uh, and and we're we're running we're running Jenkins on ARM 64 already in many many locations. So your experience on Graviton should be really great. At least our my experience has been really great. Yeah, I love it. All right. So we'll skip the, sur the dashboard survey from Jan since he's not here. We'll uh, another time. And the simple summary on this accessibility report, Christina Pizzagalli reviewed their accessibility report, compared it to what we already know, and felt like, hey, there's really in this new accessibility report, there's not any new information compared to what we already knew. Jenkins accessibility is already reasonably good and they didn't surface any new surprises that we weren't aware of. Those are all the topics I had for today. Any other topics before I conclude today's meeting? All right, recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours on community.jenkins.io. Thanks everybody for being here. Thank you, Mark. Bye.